Up in a tall cottonwood tree along the banks of the Salt River, the seemingly unthinkable is about to happen. Here it goes. A huge bald eagle nest is purposely sent crashing to the ground. But to understand why the destruction of this nest was necessary for the survival of future eagles, you need to understand some of the history about what it takes to be a bald eagle living in the American Southwest. Bald eagles are more than just our national symbol. They are a testament to what it means to be a survivor. After being nearly wiped out by the ravages of DDT in the middle of the 20th century, bald eagles began to thrive again in North America, even one of the harshest environments there is, the Arizona desert. But that's what makes them unique. They've adapted the Sonoran Desert ecosystem in these riverine-type habitats. And for me, you know, there are a lot of eagles um, throughout various parts of the country, in Alaska and all, but they're... Um, they just handle themselves differently. Bald eagles in Arizona face a myriad of challenges to survive and breed successfully, but no one imagined that a tiny bug living in a nesting tree would prove to be a deadly threat. Yeah, today was a, a little bit of a new story for us. We've, we had a, a nest where the nestlings in the last two years have all died from uh, exposure to ticks. This last year when we were in the nest to ban the nestlings, we actually found where those ticks were laying eggs and growing their young. Arizona game and fish biologists, along with other cooperating partners of the bald eagle management team, came back to this nest after the breeding season was over and the eagles were gone to treat the tick-infested branch. In order to reach the area with the bugs, Tuck has to climb the 40-foot cottonwood all the way to the nest. This is something he will do time and again as they work to save future nestlings. Since this is the first time they've encountered a problem like this, it truly became a case of necessity being the mother of invention. Using products that have been approved for use around birds, the biologists send a variety of items, one at a time, up the big cottonwood to tuck. He is going to try several methods to kill the ticks. That include spraying, tenting the nest for fumigation, and squirting foam filler into the diseased branch. But will it work? The uh, success of today's work will, uh, really, will really show next year, next May, when uh, the young, young of the year are ready to, ready to fledge. So we've got a little bit of a waiting to uh, uh, find out if, if this was successful. Arizona has 66 bald eagle breeding areas today, compared to a low of only 11 just 30 years ago. So every active nest is important to the recovery effort. Bald eagle management falls under the careful watch of Arizona Game and Fish and a coalition of 24 other partners, along with financial support from the Heritage Fund. Seven months have passed since the tree and nest were fumigated for ticks. In that time, the adult eagles have returned and successfully hatched three chicks. Now that the nestlings are about six weeks old, the biologists are back to put leg bands on the birds, something they do with all of the nests they can reach. The difficult part of the whole banding project is, is getting to the nest itself. Uh, the eagles, unfortunately, don't pick the most accessible of locations. So uh, we've got to assess each and every nest individually to find out if, if the tree's alive enough for us to get into the nest uh, safely or if the cliff is, is accessible enough for us to be able to repel into it. Meanwhile, back at the problem nest, Tuck makes his way to the three nestlings, who have to wonder what is going on, if nestlings, in fact, wonder about those kinds of things. The parents stay nearby, vocalizing their displeasure with this intruder in their midst. He carefully grabs each nestling, puts a hood over its eyes to calm it down, and booties over its talons, and places them in a special bag so they can be lowered to the team waiting on the ground. It will be five years before the young eagles develop their distinctive white head and tail feathers. At six weeks old, they simply look like gray and black balls of fluff. We take a lot of measurements. We have to determine their sex. Uh, we have to determine uh, their health. 
and we actually have to band them. So we put on these leg bands, yeah, basically band. like bracelets, and we put them around their legs and they're fitted for an adult so they'll stay on for the rest of their lives. The bands that we put on these eagles uh, don't cause a detriment to the birds. Uh, we, do, we do have to enter a nest and cause a disturbance for a couple hours, but that disturbance doesn't result in a failure. And uh, that, that couple of hours of disturbance uh, results in a, a lifetime of data that we're able to collect on these bald eagles. These nestlings get an extra close examination for any ticks or parasites that may have survived the fumigation attempt and made their way onto the young birds. So far, so good. I looked at them. They looked pretty good. They, I didn't find any ticks on them. Um, they're, they all looked pretty healthy. They're uh, fat and happy, kind of, so to speak. They mm -hmm. had a lot of food in them mm -hmm. and uh, right on target for weight. So overall looking pretty good. We spray, uh, it's an over-the-counter bird spray, mm -hmm. so it's safe for the birds. And yeah, the purpose is to uh, help combat any ticks or other parasites that are, that are on the birds. While the birds are out of the nest, Tuck has his first chance to look around and see if he can find any surviving ticks. Once the banding is complete, the birds are put back in their bag and returned to the nest. As soon as they are safely back in, the team leaves quickly so the adult eagles can begin caring for the nestlings as soon as possible. While they didn't find any ticks on the young birds, they did find a few still in the tree. So they are cautiously optimistic these nestlings will make it. Unfortunately, that optimism didn't last very long. At six weeks old, we banded these birds and everything looked good as far as the nestlings went. Uh, however, we did find some, a few ticks uh, still living on the branch, so we were a little concerned about how that was going to turn out. Um, about three weeks later, uh, two of the nestlings ended up on the ground and we took them into Liberty Wildlife. They were infested with ticks uh, again this year. So as a result of that, we went ahead and climbed the nest, nest and grabbed the third nestling from the nest so we could go ahead and treat him. Uh, treat him for the tick infestation before uh, he, he got any worse. This is the third chick from the orm nest. She was the third one to come in. We had two others come in as well and they have been coming in for the last uh, three years in a row with a tick infestation. Most of the time it's been fatal. She's been the only one that's survived so far. As the medical team at Liberty Wildlife works to keep number three alive, they are pleased with the progress this stoic little bird is making. She's looking good, actually. We're pretty thrilled with the fact that she's now standing. She couldn't stand when she came in. <clears throat> we actually spent, with the um, times that they've all come in, usually they've, they've died within you know, hours of arriving or a day or two later and the paralysis tends to affect everything. It goes, seems to just kind of go up their body. They start with limb paralysis and then pretty soon the respiratory system seems to be affected and they start having trouble breathing. And the best way to treat them is by picking the ticks off. Even if number three recovers from her ordeal, there is still only a small window of opportunity to return her to the wild. She obviously can't be put back in her own nest, so they need to find another nest that still has one chick in it and try to foster her into that nest. But the time has almost run out for this year's nesting season. The biologists have been battling this tick-infested nest for three years, and finally, they have some good news. So today was, was our, our first chance since these ticks showed up to actually uh, successfully save one of these nestlings and get it back out into the wild. Uh, what we did is, is once it got a clean bill of health, we found another nest with one other nestling and climbed up, put it in the nest tree and, and got out of there real quick. And now the adult uh, bald eagles are perched in the tree and, and checking out their, their new young. As eagle biologists like to point out, eagles can't count. So when an adult leaves their nest with one chick in it and comes back to find two, it just feeds them both. So the bald eagle foster parent program is usually very successful. After just a few short weeks of parental care, number three fledges from the foster nest to begin the life she was meant to live. But what will happen with the infected nest during the next breeding season? 
Eagles generally return to the same nest year after year, unaware of any danger their chicks might be facing. The parents have used that same nest for, for over a decade now, so they're, they're going to continue using that nest unless something changes. So we're going have to have to figure out a way to either get the parents to move or to clean the nest itself. The difficult decision was made to make the parents move. This will be the first time in Arizona an active bald eagle nest is going to be intentionally removed. So Tuck gears up for one last ascent up the cottonwood to the nest. Since none of the biologists have removed an eagle nest before, they are hoping some basic tools will allow them to pry it out of the tree. I'm going to drop this rope. What I need is uh, a piece of that baling, t baling wire, decent sized, and the uh, jack, the truck jack. It doesn't take long before the wood plank, baling wire, truck jack, and shake the branch as hard as you can nest removal tactics do the job. As the huge nest lies in ruins on the ground, we pick up our story from where we began. Everyone on the team is amazed at its sheer size. The best the biologists can figure is that the 20-year-old nest weighed over a ton. The rest of the team loads the remains of the massive nest into a truck, where it is hauled far away from the breeding area and burned. I've, I've been climbing that nest for uh, 10 years now, so uh, once that nest came down, it was really weird being in that tree and not having that huge nest right in front of me. Definitely a different feeling, definitely, definitely a, a new beginning for this breeding area. Only two months have passed since the tick-infested nest was removed. And like so many things associated with this nest, radical measures are being taken to ensure these eagles don't remain homeless. Building the artificial nest, uh, we had our partners at Liberty Wildlife built a, a real solid platform to get us started. Uh, oftentimes it's that first stick, it's the hardest one to get to stay. Uh, so we, we had a little bit of help up front, um, but once we got that uh, base put into the tree, we added additional nests to build it up so it looked more like an eagle nest. Um, but of, of course we're not as good at building nests as eagles, so we just kind of got it started and let the, let the adult bald eagles uh, finish the job for us. Bald eagles build their nests in large trees that offer them an expansive view of what's going on around their nest. They also need to be close to a food source, in this case, the Salt River. With, with that in mind, we picked a spot as close as possible to their old uh, nest. With that, we we're, know that they're able to find enough resources in this area to uh, be able to feed their young every year. But even with their best efforts, there is no guarantee that the eagles will use the nest, which would be a shame. The pair began breeding in this area in 2001. And before the ticks started killing their nestlings, they had successfully raised and fledged 15 young, a feat accomplished by only two other breeding areas in the state during the same time period. After several anxious weeks, the biologists see that the eagles have not only found the man-made nest, but they appear to be exhibiting nesting behavior. Before too long, that behavior results in the hatching of two baby eagles. So today we're out here kind of for a mid-season checkup. We wanted to, to look at the nestlings, make sure they look alive and healthy, make sure their ticks didn't somehow get into this, this other tree. Gave us a chance to go ahead and band the nestlings as well as uh, uh, just kind of give it that mid-season update, make sure everything looks well. Uh, at this point, everything looks good. We've got a, another couple of months before these birds are flying on their own and, and we get to celebrate our our first successful uh, breeding attempt at this site in four years. The celebration began about a month later when the two young eagles, one male and one female, successfully took their first flights from the nest. Just three decades ago, the bald eagle was disappearing from Arizona's skies, but 2012 was a banner year for bald eagle breeding success in our state. At least 80 eggs were laid, 
54 breeding areas were occupied, and 52 nestlings fledged. The success is due in no small part to the countless hours put in by dedicated biologists and volunteers who help these magnificent birds overcome obstacles both large and small to survive.